on the last part, the androids confront Piccolo, and Piccolo ends up fighting Android 17 like usual. However, Android 17, who was very cocky, allows Piccolo to charge up his strongest attack, without 17 even retaliating against Piccolo at all. This gives Piccolo ample time to charge up his Makanko Sampo. Piccolo launches the special beam cannon, the beam entirely bypassing 17's android barrier and killing Android 17 right on the spot. Android 18 wants to get her revenge, but sensing the quick approach of another unidentified enemy, 16 forces her to leave. Cell arrives as he completely and utterly destroys Piccolo without any effort whatsoever. Piccolo tries one last ditch effort, his Hell Zone Grenade, which catches Cell off guard and damages Cell greatly. However, Cell's vitality was not to be underestimated as he regenerates his wounds fully. Piccolo falls to the ground, energy entirely spent. Will Piccolo succumb to Cell or will someone save Piccolo in time? Well, these are questions we will answer today on Dragon Ball Z. Piccolo hangs on the boundary between life and death, almost teetering over the edge. Cell steps up to Piccolo as he kicks Piccolo straight into the water. As Piccolo's body sinks downwards, Tian Shinhan finally decides to step in. He puts his hands together forming a triangle shape and shouts, Kikoho! Cell is sent flying into a triangle shaped hole, being caught off guard by Tian Shinhan's technique. Keep in mind that in canon, Tian Shin Han did this to second form Cell. So against a weaker first form Cell, Tian's technique actually hurts Cell a little. Tian Shin Han yells to Goku. He knew that Goku was watching from above, telling him to rescue Piccolo. As he yells again, plunging Cell even further down with another Kikoho. Goku instant transmissions to the scene, thanking Tian as he teleports Piccolo right out of there. Tian Shin Han lowers his hands. His job here was done, but he knew his chance of survival was slim. There was no way Xiao would let him escape now. That was until Goku teleports back to Tian Shin Han as well and teleports him to calm his lookout. Xiao flies out of the triangle shaped hole as he looks around. Not noticing a single sea signature around, Xiao screams in anger. His plans of perfection were throttled, and the perpetrator, Piccolo, escapes unpunished. Cell swears vengeance on Tian Shin Han and Piccolo as he flies off, in search of Android 18. Meanwhile, up on Kami's lookout, a recovered Piccolo and Tian heave a sigh of relief, having each already consumed a Senzu beam. Goku sits impatiently awaiting Vegeta and Trunks' exit out of the hyperbolic time chamber. Soon after, Goku's desires were heard as Vegeta and Trunks exit the time chamber, with Vegeta eagerly awaiting a good fight with this new creature called Cell. He mocks Piccolo for his loss as he flies off, Trunks following closely behind. Goku and Gohan still decide to enter the hyperbolic time chamber for one year. Even if Vegeta was extremely confident, it didn't hurt to just play safe. As Goku and Gohan embark on their training, Vegeta and Trunks arrive at Xiao's location. Feeling Xiao's key, Vegeta knew that the fight was already over, but he would still like to get a little fun out of it. So Vegeta decided to hold himself back a little as he only went Super Saiyan Grade 1, not even intending to use his muscular grade 2 form. Cell, who was initially cocky, felt Vegeta's key soar right past his. As his eyes widened, Vegeta blitzes forward appearing in front of Cell as he punches Cell into the air. Cell takes immense damage from Vegeta's one punch and immediately takes to pleading for mercy, stating that he would give Vegeta a good fight if Vegeta just let him absorb Android 18. Vegeta cocks an eyebrow, interested at the prospect, asking Cell where Android 18 was. However, 
This is where Xiao fumbles his offer. Xiao tells Vegeta that he actually has no idea where Android 18 was, but reassures him that he would find 18 soon enough. Vegeta ponders upon this as Trunks yells at Vegeta to stop this charade. They needed to kill Xiao right here. Vegeta sighs, his patience reaching his limit. He wanted a better fight, but he could get one from Kakarot after his exit from the time chamber. Cell simply wasn't worth the effort. Vegeta puts his hands up and points it at Cell. Cell, recognizing the pose, tries to flee. Immediately yelling, Solar Flare! Trunks and Vegeta were blinded temporarily as Cell managed to escape by the skin of his teeth. Trunks yells in frustration as he glares at Vegeta. If he didn't keep playing around, Cell would have been dead by now. Vegeta merely shrugs. He didn't perceive Cell as a threat whatsoever. Hopefully next time around, Cell would give him more of a fight. This time, as Cell flees the scene, he suppresses his power fully. Previously, he didn't bother to do so after all, he thought that no one could match him, even in his imperfect state. But Vegeta's sudden power up completely caught the android off guard. However, Cell's worries don't end there. Out of nowhere, someone intercepts Cell as Cell comes to a flying halt. It was Android 16. Android 16 tells Cell that in the fight against Vegeta, he had gauged Cell's power and techniques. Now, it was time for Cell to die. This time around, Cell decided that he wouldn't underestimate his opponent. So, Cell keeps his gut up as he powers up fully. Vegeta and Trunks suddenly feel Cell's presence as they decide to fly over. However, by the time they reach, all they see is a giant explosion, then an android, and the remnants of an island. Sixteen had managed to eliminate Cell utilizing his Hell's Flash technique. Just like that, Cell was no more. Trunks tenses up. His phobia of androids coming back, but then he remembers Goku and Piccolo's words. That Android 16 and 18 weren't their enemy. 16 flies away, not even bothering to greet them. A day later, Goku and Gohan finally exit the time chamber as Super Saiyans, and Vegeta immediately challenges Goku to a fight. Learning of Cell's demise from Piccolo, Goku accepts Vegeta's challenge and easily humbles Vegeta even in his Super Saiyan grade form. Trunks returns to the past like usual as he goes and eliminates 17 and 18 and then subsequently another form of imperfect Cell. As we enter the 7 year time skip in between the Cell Saga and the Boo Saga, this is where I'll leave off for now. How will the Boo Saga's events change now that Goku is alive and well in the human realm? Well, these are questions we'll answer in the next part on Dragon Ball Z.